Hey guys, how's it going? This is Jay once again with a brand new tutorial series. And this time around, it's gonna be all about Linux Mint. And this is for all of you beginners out there that are looking for a place to start. Maybe you've heard of Linux and you wanna check it out, or you've heard of Linux Mint and you wanna check it out, and you wanna get started and you have no previous information. So that said, um, for those of you that are watching my channel that are more intermediate or advanced users, you're probably not going to learn anything in this series, but you're more than welcome to check it out because I definitely um, hope that this helps as many people as possible. So in this series, I'm gonna walk you through installing Linux Mint, which we're gonna do in this video, and then I'll walk you through using it and maintaining it. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So here I'm switched over to my laptop, and currently I am running Ubuntu Mate with a custom theme, but uh, disregard that. You're probably coming from Windows or another Linux distribution. And what I have on my screen right now is the Linux Mint website, which is where you'll go to actually download this release so that you can get it installed on your computer. So I'll click the download button here. Now the version number will of course change. We're at 19.1 right now, codenamed Tessa. They often actually always use code names that are female names, I believe. But the version number is 19.1 as of the time I'm recording this video. They do release a new version every six months. So the next version will be 0.2 and then 0.3 and then we will be up to Linux Mint 20 after that. So regardless, don't worry too much about the version number even if the version you're downloading is higher. The content in this video should work just fine. But if anything is incompatible, I will either re-record the individual video or I will put a rata in the show notes below if necessary. But basically you'll just download whatever release is the most current. Now if I scroll down, you'll see that there are three different versions of this release. We have the cinnamon release, mate, that's pronounced mate in the Linux world. We pronounce things differently than you would expect. And then we also have XFCE. So each one of these determines which user interface you're going to get. We're gonna use the cinnamon edition in this series, which is what is actually pictured right here. But the mate version and the XFCE version are basically for older computers. In addition to that, you also have a 32-bit version you can choose or a 64-bit version as well. So what should you download between the 32-bit version and the 64-bit version? So my opinion is that any computer worth using today supports 64-bit because we've had 64-bit supported processors since 2004. So even though a lot of people will make the claim that their computer doesn't support 64-bit, it's actually usually not true. They just assume that it doesn't. Quite a few computers actually support 64-bit ever since the Pentium 4 HT Prescott, if I remember correctly, was the first one or one of the first in the Intel line that supported 64-bit. I think AMD even before that. So generally speaking, you'll probably support 64-bit and that is the way forward. That is the way that I recommend. But if you do have a really old computer that truly doesn't support 64-bit, then definitely download the 32-bit version. There shouldn't really be any difference as far as this tutorial series and how you're able to follow along with it. So when you download Linux Mint, basically you'll click on 64-bit. Again, we're using the Cinnamon Edition, which is pretty much considered the main edition, but I'll click on the 64-bit option here, and then you get a list of servers. So Linux Mint basically has download servers all over the place. So you just try to choose one that's close to you. There's all kinds of links here. And I'm gonna choose uh, kernel.org, for example. So if you click on it, you'll see that you're downloading an ISO file. So what is an ISO file? You may already know, but just in case you don't, an ISO file is a clone of a CD or DVD, but in a file format. So you can use it to basically create a bootable DVD or a bootable flash drive. So regardless of if you're wanting to create a flash drive for installing it or a DVD, you'll use the same file. I recommend whenever possible, you use the USB flash drive method because that's the fastest way. Optical media is slow, but maybe your computer doesn't boot from a flash drive possibly. I think most computers that are usable today do. Uh, you may have to use the DVD. Just know that it's gonna be a little bit slower. It's gonna be running slower from the DVD. We'll get more into that in a moment. But whenever possible, go ahead and create the bootable flash drive. 
And I do have a video on my channel already that walks you through the process of taking an ISO image and creating a bootable flash drive. The process is not different in Mint than it is for any other distribution. So basically you just follow that video if you don't already know how to do that. And if you have a computer that doesn't boot from a flash drive and you want to create a bootable DVD, then just use whatever CD burning application came with your computer. You want a blank DVD because it won't fit on a CD. And I can't walk you through that process because every computer basically has a different CD DVD burning application. The instructions are different for each. I can't possibly cover them all. But generally speaking, you're looking for a burn ISO image option. And that is the option that you wanna use. Burn data disk is never appropriate. It'll never work, so never choose that. Look for the burn ISO image. And if it's working properly, it'll ask you for the ISO image it'll basically give you a place to ask where is it downloaded, you select it, and then you basically select your uh, blank DVD and it should create it for you. And then you just boot your computer from that DVD. I'm not gonna actually download this though. I'm gonna click cancel because I've already done that. And I've created a bootable flash drive already. And here it is, I've already gone through the process again. I do have a video on my channel. Check the show notes as well, because I'll put a link there, but it'll also be a card that comes up during the video, and it links to the video on how to do that. So once you have Linux Mint flashed onto your flash drive, then we'll go ahead and go into the install process. So what I'm gonna do now is just go ahead and plug it in to my computer. It should be detected. And then I can simply reboot. So you reboot your machine. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. We'll get back to the video in just a moment, guys. But before we do, I just wanted to quickly mention my sponsor, Linode. Linode is an awesome provider of cloud Linux servers. And their cloud manager dashboard makes it extremely easy to set up your own Linux server in seconds. Whether you like Fedora, Debian, or Ubuntu, or whatever your distribution of choice is, you can have your very own Linux server running your favorite distribution in a geographic location near you with the latest one just recently introduced in Toronto. So go ahead and check out the link in the description below this video where you can get $20 in credit towards your own Linux server. So go ahead and check that out and let's get right back to the video. And restart. Then you just press whatever key accesses the boot menu for your machine. It's different from one machine to the next. Mine is going to be F7. F12 is very common, especially if you're using Dell. Then we have here the boot device selection screen for this specific laptop. My flash drive has the name PMAP for some reason. Um, whatever, I'll just go ahead and press enter on that to boot from it. And we just have this option, the default option, start Linux Mint 19.1 or whatever your version number happens to be. By the time this gets edited and uploaded, uh, basically just press enter. All right, and here we have the default desktop of Linux Mint. You can see that we have a panel here at the bottom. We have desktop icons. So what is this? We haven't actually installed this yet. So how do we already have a user interface? So you may or may not already know this, but most Linux distributions offer live mode. It basically runs the operating system or distribution right off the media. So if you, for example, boot it off a DVD, well, then you are actually running the operating system straight from the DVD. Now it's gonna be slower because, you know, let's face it, DVDs are, are slow. So of course the responsive speed is gonna be a lot less than when it's actually installed. It's not actually installed yet. It's just running in a demo environment called live mode. If you're running off a flash drive, it's not gonna be as slow as a DVD, but certainly probably won't be as fast as running off the hard drive. But what this allows you to do is basically give you a chance to you know, basically use it, see if it works on your machine. Linux Mint is compatible with the majority of hardware out there, but it's not 100%. So what would happen if you had an edge case? Maybe your network card doesn't work or video card doesn't work. This gives you an option to try it out and make sure all those things work before you actually commit to the install. So that's actually the first thing I recommend you do is connect to your wireless network. If you have ethernet, you're probably already connected, but down here in the bottom right corner, I can just click on that and then I can click on the name of the wireless network I want to connect to and then put in the super secret password. And if successful, this should light up down here at the bottom and it is successful. So what you could do now is test whether or not it's working properly by just simply opening up the web browser. Firefox is the default web browser. 
and you could just go to any website you want. So a really awesome website you should check out is learnlinux.tv, which is the official website for my channel and has a lot of my videos here you can check out if you haven't already done so. And then what you can do is click on any one of these videos and listen to the audio, make sure the sound works. That's the second thing you should make sure works on a Linux machine. Just make sure your sound card is supported and you'll know that it's supported if, of course, you're able to hear audio in a YouTube video, that's a good way to test. And that's a pretty good indication that your machine is well supported. So now that you've had some time to check it out and click around, browse the internet, click on videos and what have you, you know that from what you can see so far, your system is supported. Now we can go ahead and commit to actually installing Linux Mint to finalize it and make it permanent. So how do we do that? Well, you probably already noticed we have an install Linux Mint icon right here at the desktop. I'll go ahead and close this browser here and let's go ahead and open that. So here we are at the first screen of the installation. It's basically just asking you to select your language. You just choose whatever that is and click continue. And it's asking you to select the keyboard layout. So you'll basically just click continue once you've selected that. And here we have an option to install third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware. I recommend that everyone choose that because maybe one of these things that you need is going to be among the additional packages that this installs. There's really no reason not to do this. I'm not going to do it only because I just don't wanna take extra time to download the packages and make this uh, video you know, record time longer than it needs to be. But I do recommend that you guys check that. There's just no reason not to do that and then click continue. And now we have some options. We can erase disk and install Linux Mint. We can also choose to encrypt it. And we could use LVM or something else. So what do we actually do here? What, what option should we choose? Now, most likely yours is gonna look different than mine. This laptop already had Linux running on it. So you're not seeing an option to like remove Windows or something like that. In this series, I'm going to assume that Linux Mint is the only operating system on your machine. So what I'm gonna do is erase the disk and install Linux Mint, which means it'll do exactly what I just said. It's gonna erase your disk. All your documents, pictures, files, favorites, saved games, all that's gonna be wiped out. Because I'm assuming that you basically already want to run Linux Mint as your only operating system. Now, if you'd rather dual boot, then you know I have a video on my channel for that. If you wanna dual boot with Windows, for example, you can check out that video. Uh, and basically you'll end up with the same installation that we're gonna end up with. It won't make any difference in terms of whether or not you'll be able to follow along in this tutorial. Uh, Cause basically you just boot into Linux Mint whenever you need it. But in this particular video, I'm gonna wipe out the disk. So I'm gonna already assume that you've backed up your files and have already taken care of that. Um, I make no uh, claim if any, or liability if any of your favorite files goes away. Um, just make sure you've backed up and then we'll go ahead and proceed. So here we have the erase disk and install Linux Mint, which is what I'm going to do. We also have an option to encrypt the installation. If you check that, it's gonna encrypt your entire disk. That's good for security because if your device unfortunately gets stolen, you don't have to worry about any confidential data falling into the wrong hands. It basically encrypts everything at rest. So what do I mean by encrypt at rest? So I don't want to over-exaggerate the value of encryption. Yes, it's very important. Yes, you should do it. But that doesn't save you if, for example, you leave your desk to go get some coffee or something and forget to lock your screen. Someone would still be able to get your personal data because when your machine is running, it's unencrypted. Basically, when you boot up, it'll ask you for a password and it'll unencrypt it. Now, if someone took your device and they try to power it on, well, you know, they aren't gonna be able to know your password as long as you didn't do something easy and then get your information. If they take the disk out of your computer, put it in another computer and try to read the information, they won't be able to do that. So um, there's no performance benefit or penalty unless you got a really old machine. So it's not gonna make an impact there. So it is a decision you wanna make. Um, you will have to enter the password in every time you boot. And if you forget that password, you will not be able to get your data. So just keep that in mind. For the sake of simplicity, I'm just gonna basically uncheck all these other options and I'm just gonna choose erase disk. I'll click install now, which will make this permanent. So again, I'm sure you've backed up all of your important data and I'll click that right now. We get one last uh, you know, disclaimer here that it's about to wipe out the disk and I'll click continue, which will actually make it final. And then what you do is you just choose your geographic location. You just basically click to wherever it is that you're closest to. So I'm near Detroit. So I'll just click on Michigan there and then click continue. And then you just fill out your information, uh, basically your name. You can put your first and last name if you want. I'll just put my first name there, computer name. 
I'll just put uh, Linux Mint as my computer name. That's basically what it'll show up as in the network if you do any kind of file sharing. And then you wanna type in a password here. I'm just gonna do a simple one. I'm hoping yours is better than mine. This is just a tutorial machine though, so I really don't care. But uh, basically you don't wanna forget that password. And you could choose to log in automatically, which I don't really recommend. Uh, basically, you should require the password to log in. And you also have an option down here, encrypt my home folder. You probably should not choose that if you've already done the encryption from the first screen. The, the first screen that asked about encryption is the entire disk. This one here is specifically your home folder. So I wouldn't choose that if you've chosen the other option, but if you wanted specifically just your personal data encrypted and not the entire disk, for example, an older machine where you don't want the performance penalty an older machine would get, you could choose this option instead of full disk encryption. But for the sake of simplicity, I'll leave that unchecked and click continue. And it's actually installing right now. I could click on this little arrow right here to see some cool little geeky messages about what it's doing in the background if you're curious about that kind of thing. But basically we just wait for it to finish. All right, so here we are. It says that the installation is complete. So we can continue testing, which means we just wanna to continue to play around with the live environment. But none of the changes that we make here are gonna be permanent, not until we actually restart into our actual installation. So I'll click Restart Now. And you can't see this, but it's actually asking me to remove the installation media. So I'll just pull out the flash drive, put it aside and press Enter to finish the reboot. All right, and here we have the actual login screen. So this should be what you will see with a successful installation. So you just simply put in the password that you set up in the original installation. And there you go, we have a successful installation. We have the welcome screen right here. So the installation was successful. So there you go, guys, the installation is all set. So in the second video, I'm gonna show you a little bit more about Linux Mint. Then in each subsequent video, I will show you even more. So go ahead and check that out. It should already be uploaded and I will see you in that video. Thank you so much for watching my video. I really appreciate it. If you wanna help me out, make sure you check out the description below this video where you'll find links to my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server, second edition, as well as my Patreon page. If you like this video, be sure to click that like button and share it on Twitter or any other social media network. And be sure to subscribe so you'll be the first to see my latest videos as they're uploaded. Thanks again.